Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Welcome to today's webcast discussing how you can use advanced analytics to improve sustainability. My name is Jay Pradhan and I'm a business intelligence and analytics consultant here at Thargood. I have drawn on my experience and expertise in the field of BI and analytics to bring you today's presentation. You can also feel free to get in touch via my contact details on the screen if you wish to have a longer discussion about today's topic. I will share my contact details again at the end of the presentation. Our agenda for today starts with a brief introduction to Thargood. We will then move on to a quick background on sustainability in corporates, followed by how future sustainability landscapes can be modeled. We will run through today's example, which is focused on improving packaging sustainability through using analytics. We will look at a demo showcasing scenario modeling for improving packaging sustainability. We will cover other potential use cases that can be derived from this example and how you can realize the value of this solution. Finally, we will see how Thargood can help you get started on this journey. I hope you find this session useful. And again, please feel free to submit any questions you have to the host. For those of you who don't know Thargood, we are an independent niche BI and analytics services firm specializing in strategy and roadmaps, requirements, design, implementation, training and support. We are headquartered out of London with offices all over the world. Our clients typically span four data-rich verticals, consumer goods, pharmaceutical and health services, banking and insurance, with experience across the board in various functions of these verticals. In terms of the technologies we work with, we are an independent consulting firm, meaning we don't work with one specific technology. We do, however, partner with many of the key players across the market in order to provide our clients with a solution that best suits their needs. Let's start off by looking at why sustainability is a driver in most large businesses today. While sustainability has been on the corporate agenda for a long time, it came into sharp focus in the year 2000 when the United Nations released its Millennium Development Goals. The plan was to eradicate poverty, hunger, achieve universal primary education, promote gender equality, empower women, reduce child mortality, improve maternal health, combat HIV AIDS, malaria, and other diseases, ensure a sustainable environment, and encourage global partnership for development. By 2015, many countries had achieved and even surpassed the targets set out by the Millennium Development Goals. And so, in 2015, they were replaced by more comprehensive sustainable development goals. This plan had 17 areas of focus and formed the basis of most corporate sustainability vision statements. There are many ways in which being more sustainable is beneficial to a business. It aids efficiency, improves brand value and reputation, provides a platform for innovation, helps attract and retain staff, achieves better growth, cuts cost, and strengthens stakeholder relations. Given the varying nature of businesses, most corporates pick sustainable development goals most relevant to their operations and develop programs designed to further their business while reaching sustainable targets. The 17 sustainable development goals are accompanied by 169 sustainable targets, all to be achieved by the year 2030. The UN launched a sustainability tracker to see how each goal is performing against its target. When a similar tracking mechanism is implemented for a corporate's vision of sustainability, it is important to review past data to identify areas of the business that have been impacted the ecosystem in which it operates and design sustainability initiatives and policies to address these issues. Data must also be analyzed to understand which current practices are harming your ability to operate sustainably and what you can do about it. The next logical step is to forecast emerging risks to answer questions such as, what are industry trends in sustainability? How can your firm adopt these practices? What would be the financial and sustainable impact of adopting these practices? With this holistic understanding, organizations look to model future sustainability landscapes. Each stream of your business has an impact on your sustainability. It is important to track these metrics in these targeted areas. This is enabled by setting up robust data systems and analytical models to stay on track to achieve your targets. Modern analytics architectures can be leveraged to service your sustainability need. However, developing these analytical models can become an academic exercise. This is remedied by ensuring we include right business context and examples in the course of designing statistical models. Since sustainability issues are of particular importance to governments as well as nonprofits, there is a great variety of data available pertaining to sustainability. 
issues in this area tend to span across geographies and time. And blending this data with your enterprise data enables you to answer questions like, are my efforts concentrated in the right areas and addressing the right issues? What are others doing to alleviate problems in the same areas? The scenarios that your organization is currently addressing can be analyzed and extended to simulate future behavior anticipated in other similar areas. This could mean expanding reach across verticals or geographies. Let's narrow our focus to one particular case. In today's example, we focus on an area of sustainability which has long been a pain point for consumer goods firms, waste and packaging. Waste is generated from several sources and at various stages in the life cycle of a product. For a lot of businesses, majority of the foot carbon footprint comes from the manufacturing end of the product's life cycle. For example, in the beverage industry, up to 16 units of water could be required to produce one unit of finished goods, while for some businesses, majority of the carbon footprint comes from the consumption end of the product life cycle. For example, laundry and personal care products. The lack of a robust solid waste management scheme leads to severe climate implications that last for generations. The energy necessary to process waste is also immense. This problem ties back to both consumer behavior and organization policies. Let's take a quick look at examples of waste generated by seemingly innocuous everyday occurrences. The infographic highlights the potential that exists in recycling and adopting solid waste management practices. Every year, humans produce and subsequently utilize large number of containers for their food and drinks. A large portion of these containers are manufactured using non-recyclable materials. This leads to excess dumping, incineration, and energy consumption. There is great potential to reduce this impact by adopting greener practices, but changing human behavior requires huge distributed effort. The example we will demonstrate today explores how manufacturers can take up more responsibility by improving packaging sustainability at source. The UK alone produces 170 million tons of waste each year. Much of its packaging waste and only a third of its plastic waste gets recycled. Therefore, we are going to narrow our focus on packaging materials and their impact. Let's understand why packaging material is important. Customer survey shows that consumers are more likely to use products that use packaging material that protect the product, are easy to open, and are made from environmentally friendly materials. On the other hand, more than half the consumers pick up a product on being attracted by the design and branding used on the product's packaging, which makes discarding the use of majority packaging a very difficult choice to make. When packaging materials that are not decomposable are discarded, they add to the ever burgeoning piles of waste that is not recycled, not reused, and takes a long time to degrade. Over the years, as corporates and consumers have become more environmentally conscious, the trend of waste that is recycled, represented in the graph here by the gray line, and the waste recovered, represented in the graph by the green line, has consistently increased in line with the amount of waste generated, as can be seen on the trend chart on your screen. Government regulations imposing recycling on households has also contributed to the increase in the proportion of waste that is recycled. EU, for example, passed laws in 2018 requiring European countries to recycle at least 55% of their municipal waste by 2025. However, the onus of this recycling and recovery currently lies with the consumer. In order to shift some of the responsibility to the manufacturer, the focus from corporate should be on using packaging materials that have greater recycling and recovery potential. The long-term objective has to be to drive these lines closer together while reducing total waste generated. Today's example will focus on how we can bring together different data sources to analyze packaging choices that have been made and how these choices can be substituted by other materials to assess the impact on absolute waste generated. We start by reviewing the waste footprint across the entire portfolio of a sample space. Which country shows a trend of producing the most waste associated with packaging? What products tend to generate more tons of waste? We narrow down the data set to a problem area and focus on the recycling and recovery index of each packaging material used and their recycling and recovery indices in these areas. Recycling and recovery indices are typically country-specific values 
dependent on government regulations. There are a few factors that result in this being a problem area. We identify these as key drivers for our use case. On isolation of these drivers, we look for suitable alternatives to these materials in order to identify alternatives to high impact packaging materials. And finally, we review the impact brought about by substituting the old material for a new one. Some of the questions that can be asked as part of the review are, has the net waste produced decreased? Is it more likely to be recycled than the previous material? In order to drive this analysis and selection of substitutes, we bring together three data sets. Packaging weight of the material to be substituted, assuming that the weight of the product remains the same. The packaging for the same product will need to be able to withstand the weight of the product. Recycling and recovery rates associated with these materials. Ideally, we substitute the material with one that has a higher recovery and recycle. And finally, the sales amount for the product using these materials. Let's jump into a demonstration of the solution we've had the opportunity to deploy at multiple customers. We've used Power BI along with Microsoft SQL Server to model the simulation, but this concept is technology agnostic and can be implemented as effectively using a different technology stack as well. The first screen provides an overview of key metrics like total packaging waste, total recycled packaging, and packaging waste per consumer use. From the global figures, we can see that beverage category seems to be generating a large quantity of packaging waste. We can see category totals by clicking on the waterfall chart. A double click on the South Asia bar shows the countries within that region. Here we see that Bangladesh has the biggest impact on packaging waste figures, and we drill through into a footprint analysis to analyze the underlying drivers. We can now see which packaging types have the most waste along with particular product units that are driving waste within Bangladesh and beverages. Looking, at, looking for a simple packaging changes first, let's assess the impact of switching cases used in products. We can see from the table that cases seems to be generating quite a large portion of the waste in this section. Once we've identified this material, we further drill through into scenario analysis to find suitable replacements for this material. Here, we can identify alternative packaging options and calculate the impact of making the change on the overall beverages portfolio. Using the search tool, we can find possible substitutes and we can use material recycling wastes, weights and packaging rates as a guide for suitable replacements. Having identified the packaging change we want to model, we put in the details of the replacement. The substituted specs are fed into the simulation model and the resultant, uh, resultant KPIs are calculated in real time. The results are computed for replacement across the portfolio and the output shows resulting change in the dashboard. As we can see in the scenario chosen, if we potentially replace material spec 25889, which was the original spec for, uh, for our packaging material with spec 5385, we can reduce the packaging waste from 64.3 tons to 16.7 tons for the beverage portfolio in Bangladesh. By utilizing additional data sets, users can easily quantify the impact of an innovation project save and compare results for different scenarios, and quickly identify innovations with the biggest positive impact. In the example shown, packaging item was directly replaced with another existing item. Alternatively, users can substitute a proposed new packaging item and model its use. Let's look at how we can realize the value from the solution. We can apply the concept demonstrated to multiple different use cases to drive sustainability insights. A similar solution can be implemented to assess the impact of packaging on water and carbon dioxide footprints. Most products require a large quantity of fresh water for their production, and quite a few also expend water at the consumer end of the life cycle. Manufacturing process tends to release multiple poisonous gases to the environment and reduction in this area goes a long way in reducing the net carbon footprint. The current solution focuses on consumption 
and disposal phases of the product life cycle. It can further be extended to other phases like manufacturing and sourcing. Within the realm of sourcing, the solution can track whether the ingredients used in your products are, su are sourced sustainably. Once this is identified, the ingredients have a sustainability score associated with them. Alternative ingredients can be identified for the manufacturer of these products, therefore improving their overall sustainability. On the supply chain front, solutions can track whether suppliers in your supply chain follow sustainable practices and the solution can suggest what alternative suppliers you can associate with to improve the sustainability of your brand. Recipe alternatives can look at to identify what combinations of ingredients are used commonly in your products and whether there are better combinations that can make your products more sustainable. Recycling potential is different across the globe. Due to the varying nature of laws imposed in the, and the demographics of the country, this solution can be easily modeled in one country as an example and then be expanded to include global data and enterprise data to add value. From our experience having implemented global sustainability initiatives, certain guidelines are useful to keep in mind. In setting up evaluation criteria, it is important to define who would be the right stakeholders in understanding the possibilities and outcomes from such an initiative. Typically, a good mix of statisticians alongside industry experts lend a good balance to a team judging the outcome. Analytics initiatives around sustainability must have a focused goal. A localized implementation should help you quantify the possibilities before large-scale rollouts. A review panel consisting of brand reps should conduct periodic reviews and capture detailed evidences of the progress made as a result of the solution in order to judge for acceptance. That's all we have time to cover today, although there is plenty more to explore with regards to this topic. If you have any questions or are interested to learn more, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We also have a variety of pre-recorded content available on demand on our website at thargood.com slash perspectives. Thank you for joining us today. Again, please don't hesitate to reach out to us with any questions. Thank you and have a great day.